Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to tackle second order partial derivatives. All that second order partial derivatives are is the application of a partial derivative after already taking a derivative with respect to the same variable or a different variable. We'll just quickly go over this notation and then we'll talk about what these represent and then look at an example with some graphical representation. All right, so first the notation. Importantly, when we're, we're describing the notation, we need a way of describing which partial derivatives we're taking and in which order. In this first case right here, we're applying the partial with respect to x and then applying that again. We describe that with this notation, which is exactly the same as you saw in first quarter calculus with derivatives. But this is an important notation right here. So this is saying take the partial with respect to x and then x again. This will be more uh, clairvoyant when we go on to this next example right here. Here we're applying the partial with respect to x, but then we're applying the partial with respect to y. Here's the notation for condensing this statement right here, but importantly, if we write it in this way right here, we have the derivative with respect to x first, and then the derivative with respect to y. And I probably don't need to go further in this notation scene here. If you understand that statement, that's the first derivative, it's the partial is with respect to x, and then with respect to y, you can understand all of this other notation. All right, one last thing to say is that we call these two second order partial derivatives where we take the x and then the y or with respect to the y and then the x, we call these mixed partials. And there's nothing super exciting about those except to say that we're going to have an important theorem here in a second after we do this example. All right, so in this example right here, we're given the function f of xy equals e to the x squared y. We're being asked to find all four second order partial derivatives um, as listed right here. When I do this, I like to write my first order partial derivatives and then the second order partial derivatives underneath them. Let's start with first with the x. So if we're going to find f of x of xy, f of xy, what we're going to do, the partial with respect to x, is we're going to take the derivative of this, and since we do have the x in this exponent, we take a copy of that. Chain rule is the derivative of the inside of this with respect to x, and that would be 2x and y, and again, this y wouldn't require a product rule, it's considered a constant in this case. And let's just clean this up real fast. It'd be 2xy e to the y, or x squared y. All right, let's now take the first order partial derivative with respect to y. And so what I'm going to get when I do that, I still get a copy of this e to the x squared y. And then the derivative of this with respect to y is just this x squared right here. And so we could write that as x squared e to the x squared y. All right, now for the fun, let's take our second order partial derivatives. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to take the partial with respect to x of this partial with respect to x. So what I'll be finding here is f of xx. X. Uh, and what we'll get in this case, well now we do have product rule. So we have this product times this, right, or this factor times this factor right here. Uh, the derivative of this would be 2y, right? So this is a linear equation in terms of x right here. Both the 2 and the y are constants. And then multiply it by the second factor. And then we're going to add to that the derivative of this, but we just did that right up there with respect to x. So this is going to end up being 2xy e to the x squared y. Um, so that's that derivative that we pre previously found. And then we're going to multiply by this 2xy. And then to clean this up, what I'm first going to do is factor out the stuff that they have in common, which is this 2y e to the x squared y. Um, and then what I'm left with here is just 1, and then when I take this out, let me get rid of all that, would be plus uh, 2x squared y. All right, let's now take the second order partial with respect to y. So f of xy is, we're now going to take the derivative of this function right here with respect to y, and so we still are going to have the product rule. And so we would get 2x out of that first derivative of this factor with respect to y, and then e to the x squared y, plus uh, the derivative of this with respect to y, 
But we already know the derivative of e to the x squared y with respect to y. That's exactly what this is right here. So that's our first factor, x squared e to the x squared y. And then we need to multiply the derivative of that by this. And so we get 2xy. And again, just to clean this up and make my life a little bit easier here in the near future, um, what I'm going to do is factor out a 2x e to the x squared y. And when I do that, I get, I get 1 in this first term. And this second term, uh, I get rid of the 2, the x, and then I get rid of that. I have just plus x squared y. All right, moving along. I know this is going fast, but all we're really doing is remembering that we're treating these other variables as a constant as we take these derivatives. And we're now, in this case, we have some product rule going on, which was making it messy. I would always suggest factoring out as much as you can out of these shared terms. It really can make your life easier with analysis uh, later down the road. But let's tackle this right here. So we have the first order partial with respect to y. Let's apply the partial with respect to y again to this. This will be a bit easier um, because this is a good example right here where this is now treated as a constant. So I don't use the product rule in this case um, for this x squared. It stays out front. I get a copy of the e to the x squared y here. And then I multiply by the derivative of x squared y. But again, this x squared is just a constant. This is linear in terms of y. So I get this x squared out. So simplifying this right here will be x to the fourth e to the x squared y. And now let's take that second order partial uh, with respect to x. So if we have f of y x here in this case, we're taking this function right here and taking the derivative with respect to x. This is going to be product rule now. We have two factors that are varying with respect to x here. So I'll first take that derivative, which is 2x times e to the x squared y um, plus the e to the x squared y derivative with respect to x. But again, this is where I kind of like cheating a little bit. That's not really cheating, but like right, making my life easier when I do this. I've already done that since that is my original function. If I differentiate that, uh, take the partial with respect to x, I get this right here. And so I'm just going to write that out. And again, we could verify that, but that's absolutely what we're looking for. I'm going to multiply that by um, this factor right here of x squared without taking the derivative. And now if we just clean this up, I can factor a 2x e to the x squared y out of both of these. So I get 2x e to the x squared y. And in this case, I get a 1. And if I get 2x and the e x y, I have x squared and a y. So there is my mixed second partial order or second order partial of f of x y. All right, so, so far, all that really has been is a practice in applying the concept of partial derivatives to these partial derivatives. We want to spend a little bit of time to kind of conceptually understand these if we can. I'm going to look at a graphical representation of this function and evaluate these second order partial derivatives at a point to see if we can add a little bit of sense making to this. But one important thing before we move on is the fact that these two mixed partial derivatives are exactly the same, and that is no fluke. Importantly to say is that the mixed partial derivatives for your function, as long as they're continuous on the defined domain of your function, they will actually always be exactly the same. So the order of taking your partials actually does matter, except in this case right here, it won't matter if your function, if the par second order partials are continuous on the domain of your original function. What that means is it's important to remember that the order does matter when taking these partial derivatives. But if you have a function that's going to have second order partials that are continuous on its domain, and that's often the case where things like polynomials and more simple functions that don't have a lot of domain restrictions, if that is the case, then they will always be the same. All right, so last thing I'd like to do with this example is give some graphical understanding that can help ground you with what these second order partial derivatives actually are. Um, what I want to do is investigate is what happens at the point graphically um, when x is 1 and y is 0. So if we just evaluate this real fast, so 1 comma 0 would be e to the 1 squared times 0. That's just e to the 0, which is 1. So we're looking at the point. 1 comma 0 comma 1. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to evaluate each of these partials at 1 comma 0. 
Don't worry, it's actually gonna work out really nicely. I chose these X and Y values, so these simplify um, pretty much straightforward, but let's just go right at it right here. So what I'm gonna do is evaluate this partial derivative at one comma zero, and when I do that, importantly, my Y value is zero, there's no more thinking to do. This partial at this point, or at this input, excuse me, is going to be zero. As is this second example right here, if I plug in one comma zero, again, because this had this y factor on the outside right here, this whole thing will zero out. For this partial derivative right here, if I evaluate this at one comma zero, I'm actually not gonna get zero. This is pretty exciting. Um, so this is gonna be two times one times one. So this is gonna be two. Um, times one plus, and then this will make this factor zero. Um, so this is gonna end up being two, which awesomely means I know that this is also gonna evaluate to two. Back up here, when I plug in one comma zero, um, what I'm going to get is one times one, so I get a one out of this. And then last but not least, when I evaluate this second order partial at one comma zero, I'll get one times one. So I also get one for that second order partial. All right, let's end our discussion of second order partial derivatives by looking at the graphical representation of this function. And you'll see that we've labeled the point one comma zero comma one, and we've put in these trace lines that are the intersections with the planes at x equals one and y equals zero. Right now, what I wanna do is go through all of these values and see if we can interpret these, but I would highly recommend at this point, you pause this video before I give my explanation and see if you can make some reasoning of these and see if you can make sense of what does it mean for instance, that this first partial order is zero and that partial is that first order partial is one, and then we'll go through the rest of the explanation. I hope you took me up on that offer for your deposit and to think about it yourself. But here is the basic representation or the basic interpretation of these first two. If you'll see, as we run from the point one comma zero comma one and run parallel to the x-axis or increase along the x-axis, you'll see this function has that flat trace line, which represents no change in the output or the z value. But if we travel parallel to the y-axis, increasing in y, you'll see that our function value is increasing, that output, that z value is increasing. Now the second order partials are the change of the rate of change. So in this first statement right here, what this is asking, so as I move along the along parallel to the x-axis, how is my rate of change changing? And it will make as much sense as that. Well, it's like, it's not, it wasn't changing before at all, and it's not changing or growing in any way. It looks like to infinity, it's going to stay at a rate of change of zero. But then if we investigate this, and this is where I hope it starts to make sense for you, so that rate of change as we travel along the x-axis is zero. But if we now, not along, but parallel to the x-axis, now if we just move parallel to the y-axis, this is stating how the rate of change as you move in parallel to the x-axis is changing. So if you look at that graph right there, and now think about moving and be in this direction right here, moving in the positive direction of the y-axis, what you'll see is that we have this flat line originally at first represented by this zero, but as we move positive in the y direction a little bit, you'll see now that as we move along parallel to the x-axis, we are gonna get some rise in slope. And then for this second order partial derivative, what this is just saying is that the rate of change that was already a positive is increasing over time as you move, again, in the positive direction of the y-axis. By the way, what this kind of gets you to think about, and hopefully that starts to make sense, it's describing some form of concavity. So your rate of change is, in, is positive, which means that you're increasing as you move in that direction. But if your rate of change is increasing, it means you're increasing this steepness of these tangent planes. And this also speaks to basically the same thing that we said over here, but this is describing the rate of change of in the y direction as we move in the positive x direction. What you'll notice right there is we get kind of that cusp, we're moving up. So as we increase just a little bit along the x axis, the actual, the steepness is getting steeper along the, at the y direction. 
Okay, that's a lot. If you didn't get all of that, that's okay. But it's really think important for me, I think, to understand these first order partial derivatives. And you see that horizontal line that runs parallel to the x-axis that runs through this point, and that point, that line that's increasing as you move in the positive y direction there. Um, and hopefully, these can make some sense. I really like this one a lot, where that makes sense that that's zero, is as I move in the positive x direction, it's not changing, that rate of change isn't changing at all, it's staying zero. But if I move in the y direction, it does change then as I move parallel to the x-axis. But again, don't worry too deeply about that. At very first, what you want to be able to do is functionally be able to take these second order partial derivatives and we'll deepen your conceptual understanding of these as we look at more calculus concepts for these multivariable functions.